Today is a restaurant tour. It's beholden on you to have a gluten-free offering. Whether it's pizza, pasta, or bread, you should have an alternative for the gluten-free lifestyle. Hudo, after two to three years in research and development, was able to come up with a gluten-free product that for some, it's very hard to tell the difference. We're gonna show you how to use that. We're gonna show you the technique and also how to get a product that your customers are going to be dying to come back for. Hi, my name is Miguel D'Amelio from Italy. Now I'm gonna show you how to mix this best gluten-free ever in your pizzeria. We're gonna use a full bag, which is one kilo, uh, 800 milliliters of cold water, 25 gram of salt, 20 grams of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, eight gram of fresh yeast. First step, we're gonna dump all the water inside the mixer. I'm gonna take, take all the fresh yeast, I'm gonna dump inside, melt with the hand. We open the bag. Drop all the flour. And we start the mixing process at the slowest speed. Once I don't see any wet, I'm gonna add the salt. What I like to suggest is have a spatula with you and uh, so we can clean the sides uh, of, the, of the bowls of the mix here. And uh, another secret is to make sure this spatula is a little wet of olive oil so it doesn't stick your dough. We give a little stop, we go clean all the sides this is really sticky though, but once you use the olive oil, it's gonna come easier to, to work. Okay, we let it start again. Like we see the spatula is clean, so no, we don't have any sticky dough on our spatula. Looks like all the dough goes together, get together and we drop the olive oil. We don't drop all in once, but we let absorb the, the olive oil slowly. So right now we can see uh, the dough get together. We don't have uh, gluten, so we don't have to, to build any gluten. So. Uh, we just let it mix all together and make sure all the ingredients are together. We do one more time, we stop the machine and we clean in the side. There we go. Again, the, the spatula is clean so the dough is no stick on the dough, on the spatula. Now we have about five, six minutes. We are ready to stop the machine and take it out the dough from the bowl. Always have a little olive oil on your hands. It's gonna be easier to take it out. Don't stick your hands on the dough. Use the spatula. We can see is one solid dough. It looks sticky, but it's you see it touching with the olive oil, make easy. Okay, now we are all set to divide the dough balls. We're gonna scale the, the, the dough and the wrap in a plastic. What I also suggest to add a little olive oil on the base 
of the scale. There we go. Like you see, it's not stick on the hands, so we naturally can touch the dough and measure. My suggestion is to do 300 grams for each dough boost. Perfect. This dough doesn't really need to roll it in some way, just we make sure it's one block, one double, and uh, that's it. Once it's here, you can see it's, it's wet, it's not sticky, because our hands and the little oval on the dough make it easy to touch, even if it's still really, really um, wet. So we're gonna head in the middle of the plastic, and nicely and gently, we're gonna close, just like wrap a candy. Gonna take out all the air inside and roll it like this. Close, and that's how we make the double. I suggest to do in this way for a few reasons. The most important reason, right here, you can put the dough uh, close to the flour, doesn't get contaminated from a regular double zero flour. Uh, plus, in this way, when actually this is going to rise a little bit uh, and uh, it's going to be easy to manage. You can drop in a container like I'm going to show you. You can storage line this way and uh, it's going to be really easy. Okay, this is my dough after 12 hours sitting in a cooler. Uh, after the process to doing, uh, wrapping the plastic, that's the final result, so it's ready to use. I'm gonna grab one, and you're gonna see how easy it is the, to, to keep the dough in the, the plastic. So we open just like candy. We are gonna use for stretch the same flour we use it for the, for the mixing process. So we're gonna drop a little flour on the top. Make sure it's roundly, perfectly. And what we started to doing is start to press out the, the, the oxygen is in the dough. So with my right hand, I'm gonna push to create a crust. And with my left hand, I keep the cross because remember this dough doesn't have a gluten so it's no it's not strong can break with any wrong movement so we gently press down and keep the cross around we move it because we don't want to get stuck and we keep doing the same movement around the edge. Slowly and gentle. Okay, once we get the desired size, we're gonna proceed with the toppings. So what is good about this tomato is it's no, I don't have a lot of water inside. It's really dense, so my pizza will be no wet. And uh, the process is just open the cans, milk, and uh, get this result. So like you can see, it's dense salsa tomato and doesn't have uh, extra water inside. So I'm gonna add this spoon on the pizza. sure we don't go out from the edge. Gonna add basil. Gonna add fresh mozzarella cheese.
and a little olive oil. Going in a big. Gonna use a little flour on the peel and go through slowly. I always recommend to use a uh, peel with holes so the extra flour can go down. We, we aren't gonna bake in this oven today, but you can bake in any ovens. So in any temperature, you will have good result. This oven, it's really hot. Uh, it's about uh, 900 degrees. So it's gonna be baked in about one minute because there's actually is no flour. So we don't have, uh, we have only a little caramelized from the, from the protein of this dough. And uh, make sure all the corner get a color. And this is the right fit. So a lot of people cannot say this is gluten free because uh, usually gluten free, it's really like crusty like cookie, really thin. But uh, once you see or you try this pizza, it's gonna taste completely different.